Hello everybody, how are you? It's Friday afternoon here in Los Angeles. Pouring rain all day and the forecast, believe it or not, believe it or not, the forecast is for rain for the next nine days in a row. Welcome to sunny Southern California. Uh, but I have to say we need the rain the plants and the grass and the golf course needs the rain. So guys, uh, this video, we're going to take the opportunity as we drive in the rain to talk about our favorite city this week, Omaha, the featured city, which we've been talking about all week. And guys, the reaction has been off the charts. So many people from Omaha contacting me saying, hey, finally somebody is giving us the thoroughness that we deserve. And uh, a lot of people are asking, can you interview people on the street? We're going to have that coming up over the weekend. Uh, because it, really, that's the difference between my videos and some of these other uh, tourism and history videos, uh, travel videos. Uh, I get down into the nooks and crannies, the streets and avenues, and talk to the people on the street and find out what's happening. And so we'll do more of that over the weekend. Uh, for now, we're just going to talk a little bit about the culture of Omaha and how it developed over the years. And of course, Omaha is not seen as a cultural center. It's got other advantages that it's uh, more known for. But uh, in, in the case of, like I say, a, a New Orleans or in Atlanta, a Memphis, where they are known for music and other cultural attractions and, and influences, Omaha doesn't necessarily have that image. but that's not to take away from all of the things that are going on there. Because again, you have a very busy, very successful mid-sized city. And uh, along with that comes the music and arts and culture that uh, are appropriate for uh, that, kind of, uh, that kind of town. Museums, uh, art galleries, music centers, music schools, nightclubs, entertainment centers, concerts, you know, ballet, opera, all of those things take place in Omaha. So let's go through it. This will be a long one. So let's talk about it now because I'd like to get it out of the way so people don't get confused. Uh, these are parody videos. This is a parody channel. So that what that means in English is I'm going to make it up off the top of my head. So therefore, if you're coming here from the Google machine or from the YouTube search and you're looking for a real video about what's going on in Omaha, <laughs> one that might actually be useful to your life, that is not this video. This video will be really a uh, sort of a almost more like a tour of my brain than anything else which should alarm you and probably will uh, make sure that you never ever have your children uh, watch or listen to these videos. So uh, let's, let's get into it. So the main thing about Omaha is that the music, just like any city, just like anywhere, the music and the culture uh, extends from the lifestyle and the way that the city developed. Now, how did Omaha develop? What have we learned in my videos so far on this great city? Well, we learned that it was big with stockyards. It was big with railroads. It was big with wholesaling and jobbing and that it had a tumultuous growth in terms of uh, management and labor strife, strike breaking, uh, riots along those lines, as, as have many other cities and probably 10 times worse. But that is the real deal and we deal with real life in these videos. So what do you get when you have that kind of an environment? You get the blues. You get jazz, you get rock and roll, you get punk, okay? You get some forward-looking uh, modernist painters, okay? You get poetry. Now, it may be the poetry uh, that you might get out of uh, the darkened factories of England, okay? It might be the uh, morose and dark uh, prose that you would get out of any kind of blue collar or factory town. But in this case, here you had one of the first 
gateway cities to the west and that's not just talking guys it was it was the location of one of the most important railroads the head end you said no the head end had to be in cincinnati or chicago no it was in omaha <laughs> the overland trail the railroad that came from the overland trail that, that uh, basically followed the overland trail which was the wagon train trail started in omaha and the only reason it didn't start in Iowa or points east is that they didn't have a bridge. <laughs> you know, so Omaha said, well, yeah, just start here, boy. Get it. Drive that spike. <laughs> so, they, so they made Omaha sort of the uh, central locus of the, or the central access point and building the railway out west. And what, did they, what happened after that? Yeah. The Western United States grew like a weed. I mean, you didn't, you didn't think every settler that came out west was on that, one of those covered wagons, did you? That would have taken forever. We'd still be we'd still be settling uh, Utah today. We'd still be seeing wagon trains coming in from Utah or from into Portland today. And they and the pioneers in those wagons would never have had an iPhone. Would would never have seen TV. Would never have seen a movie. And when you ask them, what do you think of the remake they're doing of Top Gun? They're gonna. What are you talking about, Top Gun? Is that like when you put the gun on the top shelf of the cabin that we're about to build out here in the prairies? <laughs> no. See. So this is why uh, Omaha is such an important part of our historical record in this country. A lot of people don't know uh, and I think it's just because it's somewhat under the shadow of Chicago and uh, perhaps other uh, larger Midwestern cities but uh, hey we're trying to set the record straight so uh, blue the blues was a major influence in Omaha that's why you have that such a rich history of Omaha blues that's why when they talk to blues musicians of the 40s and the 50s and the 30s anybody that's from that area that's still alive and still gigging they talk about a lot of their influence a lot of their music came from the Omaha sound it's called the Omaha sound and it's a mix it has kind of a country twang to it that is mixed with Memphis Chicago and Kansas City blues with a dash of Atlanta soul and that's the Omaha sound guys and it it's the sound of the riverboat it's the sound of the stockyard and so here you have these blues musicians singing the songs in the middle of the night just trying to get through another day remember blues didn't come from guys that were uh, setting out to become known blues musicians and so their names go down in history they were just singing the blues just like you and i do when we complain to our loved ones about how we don't like our boss because they don't listen even though they every meeting they talk about uh, i have an open door so what happens you go in and you're like all right hey man uh i want to take advantage of your open door policy because I've got problem X, Y, Z, and A, B, C. And so what do they do? They go, I give you the power and I, I believe in you so much that you can handle this problem on your own. In other words, they don't want the monkey on their back. And yet, at a certain point, that's why they have the job. They have to <laughs> help, help with certain situations that are bottlenecking workflow and demoralizing the team and yet what do they do they put it back on you and here you are not even paid to be handling problems of this size and yet there you are leading the team from uh from within so you know they were just trying to get through another day that's why when you know they you hear these blues songs that were so big coming out of Omaha. These monster hits from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, even into the 60s and 70s. Things like My Salt Shaker Only Has One Open Hole Blues. Okay, that was a monster hit. All right, the My Shoelaces Are Tight So Tight I Can't Undo Them And Get The Shoe Off My Foot Blues. Another monster hit. 
the I ordered this hat custom made, but it's an inch too big for my head blues. See, these are real world situations that these blues musicians encountered. And what did they do? They didn't complain. Well, maybe they complained. Maybe they dealt, dealt with it the way you and I do. But what did they do in addition? They wrote a song about it. And they made it into monster blues hits. Now, why were they so popular with these songs? Because they speak to the human condition that you and I can understand. So that when we're tip-tapping our feet to the beat, and we're nodding our head to the emotion that they're communicating and they're singing. I mean, who could not stop crying uh, when Billy Holiday talked about, I shut the car on my finger blues. I shut the car door on my finger blues. Well, hey, uh, I don't know if you've ever done that, but I can't imagine you haven't at some time or another shut the car door on your own head and that, that is the kind of pain that you can feel when Billie Holiday sang about it and of course everybody knows Billie Holiday while she's not from Omaha spent a lot of time there and there was the legend that she shut the car door on her hand on her finger in Omaha and that's why she wrote and produced and sang that song that was such a monster hit that fans would bring her back out. If she didn't sing it during her show, they'd bring her back out and they'd start yelling, Omaha! Omaha! And what that meant was sing that song that you wrote when you were in Omaha and you were... Uh, touring around the country but wrote that song when you stopped in at Omaha and uh, stayed at the Strathmore Hotel in, uh, in the year that would be, turned out to be one of the biggest of your career. Okay, she's, she's not a, she wasn't born there, but she's a daughter of Omaha in their hearts and that's why you have such a strong blue scene in town today. That's why when you go to the music row in Omaha, you'll see 40 or 50 blues uh, uh, blues outlets, okay? Blues clubs. And, and, and it's not just the blues. I mean, think about the bebop scene. Think about the uh, hootenanny scene, right? Think about the uh, achy breaky heart uh, dance, country dance, country line dance scene in town. I mean, music is such an uh, important element in the fabric of Omaha, it's hard to separate all of the different influences because the town is not that big. So what happens when you mix all of these different musical styles? You get, a, you get, you get rappers that can play fiddle. You get country singers that know how to lay down a rap uh, freestyle. And it's that kind of excitement, guys. That's what it's all about. That's what makes the American music scene what it is today, is that kind of cross, cross-pollination. And Omaha is really the model of that, more so than any other city, okay? And so, you know, we talked about the blues. Let's talk a little bit about the jazz scene in town. Now, remember, three or four of the biggest names in jazz are closely connected to Omaha, either by uh, relatives or by writing songs that connected them to the city in some fashion. So for example, Miles Davis. Miles Davis wrote Omaha On My Mind. Uh, uh, the, the original name of the song was Omaha On My Mind. I've got uh, frozen underwear in my pants, okay? Because he wrote it during the winter of, I believe it was 51, when Miles Davis was touring, and the heat went out in his hotel right down there by the river. So, it, you know, this is the kind of jazz standard today that came out of living and struggling and uh, eventually conquering uh, difficulties and challenges in Omaha and that's how what Miles Davis did and, and then what what did he what did he pull from that did he 
Did he uh, just go to the hospital and get better and forget about it? No. What makes him an artist and what separates him from you and me is that he turns his pain into blues and jazz gold. Okay? And so that's why you have Miles Davis uh, constantly in his interviews. I remember an interview with Downbeat that he did in 1949. And they asked him, "What? Why? Why do you keep playing uh, Omaha on my mind, uh, freezing cold underwear in my pants at every show?" And Miles was not a guy that uh, minced words, and he he was almost kind of cryptic in his responses. He said, "He said Omaha on my mind because that was the time when I realized." that my, my God, my gift was God given and that my job was to give it to the people. Okay. That I was channeling God to the people and that music was just the, was the vehicle, was the channel. And so Omaha on my mind, frozen underwear in my pants. Well, that was just another brick in the wall of, of, uh, honor and of a blessing that God gave to him and that he gave to the world. So this is why you see today the, even in the punk, even in the thrash metal scenes in Omaha, you see a lot of respect for the music that came before, the musicians that laid the groundwork in Omaha for such a strong and vibrant music scene. That's why you have the very popular thrash metal band called uh, Barbed Wire barbed wire fence in North Omaha. That's the name of the band, barbed wire fence in North Omaha. Thrash metal band. That's why they play a thrash metal version of Miles Davis's Omaha on my mind, frozen underwear in my pants. Okay. And, and, and everybody loves it. That's why you have a disco version of that song. That's why you have a bebop version of the thrash metal version of that song. I mean, guys, it loops around. It's a giant musical uh, circus. A three-ring circus of, of different musical styles throughout the city that, that makes it so important to all these music, musical artists that they put Omaha on their tour every year. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a reason that you have Kid Rock coming to Omaha on every tour. In fact, on some tours, he'll come twice. And I don't mean two nights in a row, three nights in a row. I'm talking about he makes a separate stop three or four months later. <laughs> I mean, it's very exciting and very cool. So let's talk about more of the, somebody might call it the uh, upper class, uh, the cultural uh, influences like ballet and opera. And you, you say, well, they don't have a, a ballet in Omaha. Well, you say that because you don't know what you're talking about. The Omaha Ballet is at a very important cultural institution. Now, it is true that it, it evolved from the original Old West, right? The Wild West. And so were they doing ballet necessarily in those days? No, but they did have dancers at the saloons that were so popular in the Rudum Tudum Rock and Sockum days of people uh, drawing at high noon when they had a complaint that somebody seemed to be cheating at cards. And so you had predominantly female uh, dancers. There's a couple guys who jump in there and uh, do the uh, fishing dance. If you've ever seen the uh, every dad at a wedding gets out there and does the broken leg or the fishing line dance style. And so you had some of those some of those influences early on in the early parts of Omaha's history, but it evolved. And that's why you have this beautiful Omaha Ballet today. Now, what's interesting about the Omaha Ballet is that the dancers still wear the the, the dresses of the Old West. Okay, uh, those frilly, fluffy dresses, and they wear cowboy boots. Now, this doesn't get them a lot of recognition by the New York Times, but you know what the people in Omaha think of the New York Times? They don't think about it at all, because they could care less. What they care about is their own culture that they've developed 
very, very stubbornly over decades, and you could say hundreds of years. Because when they, when uh, uh, Lewis and Clark came rolling through, uh, it was 1804. So come on, we're talking about 2020. It's more than 200 years. So Omaha has paid their dues, and now they're reaping the cultural benefits of an enriched life. See, in Omaha, they understand that it's not just about working 140 hours a week. You need to take time to let your soul breathe in culture so that then you are more balanced. Your spirit is filled to the top. Your happiness level is filled to the top. You're beaming. You're beaming with pride and happiness and joy because you've witnessed, what have you witnessed? You've witnessed beauty. You've witnessed a unfolding of creativity and innovation right before your eyes that has been balanced with skill and precision. And, and not every city can offer this. I don't think Sioux City can offer this. I really don't. I, I don't think if you went to uh, Iowa City, they could offer this. If you went to Clear Lake, Iowa or Ottumwa, I, I doubt that they have a ballet. I really do. I mean, they might. I, I mean, if you went to... Lodi, Ohio, or Texarkana, Arkansas, they might have a ballet. I'm not saying they don't, but all I'm saying is Omaha does, even though they wear cowboy boots and cowboy hats and the frilly dresses of the old days, the, and, and most of the music is written with a country line dance feel to it with thrash metal tinges and a little bit of rap here and there to connect the passages between this act. Well, you're talking about it's coming from the smorgasbord that is the Omaha music and uh, cultural scene. And probably you could say maybe it's only the people in Omaha that understand it, right? Because they know all of the references. They know why it's important. They uh, it, uh, Visually, it appeals to them because everything that the dancers wear refers back to the origins of the city that gives them their daily bread. So that's why now, so that's the ballet. Now let's talk about the opera. The Omaha opera doesn't get as much coverage because it's only three guys. And uh, the conductor is the famous, uh, she's, a, she's been a conductor her, her whole life, but she started out as a conductor on the PG&E railroad, okay, on the Omaha line. Uh, running from Omaha to Lincoln and then points northwest. And what happened was she started singing while she was conducting uh, engines, uh, railroad cars. Uh, and, and that led to her conducting the pets that people brought on board in an animal uh, orchestra. So you'd have a couple dogs, a couple cats, there'd be a parrot and a snake. And these are uh, the pets of passengers on the railroad as they headed west. And she, they would slither and, and pad themselves over uh, when they heard her singing in the railroad car, in the engine car. All right. And so then she would lead them in song and that led to conducting and it led to conducting in the uh, Omaha Opera. And so that's why, because of that history, see, people don't understand they always ask, every time they go down to the Omaha Opera, they go, why is there a fox singing? Okay, why is there a dog and a snake in the chorus? Well, because that's how it developed. And that's the, the origins of what make it unique. And, and perhaps that's why it doesn't get as much coverage. People don't think it's serious. I don't know. But people in Omaha know better. And here's what they think about whatever other people think. They don't think anything about it. They could care less. Omaha could care less what they think about them in Chicago. Do you think people are laying awake at night going, I wonder what they think about me in Sioux City. I wonder what they think about us in Denver or Boulder <laughs> or Boise or Coeur d'Alene. No, they don't, <laughs> that never occurs. You know what happens when people's head hits the pillow in Omaha, they fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> like a normal person would because they're happy and healthy and they could care less what anybody thinks about them and the fact that there's a fox singing in their uh, opera. It's 
normal and natural to them and that's all they can care about and that's really the way it should be. Am I wrong? I don't, I don't think I'm wrong. I mean, if I'm wrong, leave a comment. Tell me I've lost my mind, but I, I, it doesn't even matter what you or I think. It matters that Omaha is, is this, this uh, leader in musical styles and really the blend of musical styles and that's why you know many of the monster hits from the 30s on have a, an Omaha connection. Well, guys, I hope that helps. Uh, it's an unusual and, and really exciting scene. So I want you to get on the next bus, the next train, the next aeroplane, as soon as they lift all of the travel uh, bands. And uh, because of uh, medical problems and viruses and, uh, and all that, once all that is lifted, Get over there to Omaha. Get yourself some, uh, get on the TV and watch Mutual of Omaha. Uh, eat some Omaha steaks and go see the Omaha Opera, the ballet, and some thrash metal bands and the blues. And really enrich yourself and your family. I think everybody's going to love it. Well, guys, that's all that I have on the Omaha music and culture scene for now. Come on back. We've got more videos. We're going to talk about sports. We're going to talk about the economy.